request to authorize a budget adjustment in the amount of three million five hundred thousand from the tax deduction res revenue reserve fund for an internal loan to fund project three two zero zero eight nine Cayucas Veterans Hall Rehabilitation Project in Fund Center 230, necess necessary to proceed with bidding the project and award a con construction contract in the future by a four-fifth vote in District 2. Do we need a few minutes to set up? Okay, let's give staff a few minutes to set up. And again, if you wish to speak on this, I know, I know a lot of people are here to speak on this, so uh, turn in a speaker slip, please. Okay, I think we're ready. Good morning, board, members of the public. I'm John Waddell, Deputy Director with Public Works Department. We have a joint presentation today. Uh, we have Rob Ruiz, the Division Manager for Capital Projects and Public Works. We also have Jim Hamilton, the Auditor, Controller, Treasurer, Tax Collector, and Nick Franco, the um, Director of the County Parks Department. This um, Caicos Beth Hall project um, is planned to be managed by County Parks once complete. Public Works is providing project management services and will um, administer the construction contract. And the auditor's office is advising on funding strategies. So um, Rob Ruiz is going to start our presentation um, and then we'll turn it over to the others. And there are also several staff available to answer questions at the end if needed. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, Chair Compton and board members, my name is Robert Ruiz and I'm with Public Works. As John indicated, this is a multi-department presentation. So Mr. Franco and Mr. Hamilton will, will jump in here shortly and we'll all be available for questions uh, after the presentation. Okay, I'd like to start with a brief history of the Cayucas Vets Hall, also known as the Cass Warehouse. The Cass Warehouse and the Cayucas Pier were built by the town's founder, Captain James Cass, in the 1870s to establish a shipping port in Cayucas. The warehouse and pier served as shipping trade along the central coast as a location to buy and sell produce, livestock, lumber, and other goods. In 1920, the state of California purchased the warehouse. By this time, Tourism was playing a larger role than shipping, so the tramways were pulled up and the building was moved from its original location at the end of the pier to its current location just north of the pier. Over the next few decades, the building was added onto and remodeled to become the Cayucas Veterans Memorial Hall, a community center that has served the town's central gathering place and primary venue that has served as the primary venue. The hall hosts numerous events throughout the year, including weddings, concerts, celebrations, and special events, which have brought significant economic benefit to the region. The hall has also been the home for community groups and service organizations for meetings, fundraisers, and so social events. It has been the social, economic, and cultural heart of the community for generations. In 1944, the county entered into an agreement with the state parks to operate and maintain the state-owned facility for the use and enjoyment of the general public. Under this operating agreement, the county agreed to maintain the facility in good condition, so many maintenance and capital projects have been completed over the years for needed repairs. Language in the operating agreement is clear that maintaining the facility and making it accessible to the public is an obligation on the county. Not rehabilitating the facility and keeping it closed to the public is not an option. It, if not rehabilitated, the county will still be responsible for the facility and, and a further decayed facility may translate to greater liability to the county. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, thank you. So, a, county pro a county project in 2015 to repair the exterior stucco revealed the original warehouse wood siding beneath the stucco as well as inadequate wall framing. A comprehensive structural analysis was completed and determined that the entire building lacked the lateral bracing necessary to transfer wind and earthquake loads to the foundation. 
Additionally, the foundation itself was failing due to the corrosion in the reinforcing steel within the concrete. As a result of these factors, the facility was de deemed unsafe to occupy and was closed to the public on May 4, 2016. Recognizing that the community was hard hit by the closure of the hall in 2017, the county undertook a temporary shoring project that would stabilize the structure and allow at least temporary occupancy of the building's secondary spaces, the kitchen, art gallery, and conference room. This along with the installation of a tent structure at the outside barbecue patio area adjacent to the hall allowed at least some meetings and events to be held outside. You need to take a break? Yeah. Yeah, why don't we take like a five minute break and we'll come back. It's starting inhaling and you, I tell, feel like Tell me about it. Yeah. So recognizing that the community was hard hit by the closure of the hall in 2017, the county undertook a temporary shoring project that would stabilize the structure and allow at least temporary occupancy of the building's secondary spaces. The kitchen, art gallery, and conference room. This along with the installation of a tent structure at the outside barbecue patio area adjacent to the, call, the hall allowed at least some meetings and events to be held on site. However, this past summer, the state fire marshal red tagged the facility stating that unless a licensed structural engineer can certify the building as safe in its entirety to occupy, they would not allow even partial or limited occupancy of the building. Since closure of the facility, staff has been working with state parks to determine a course of action to reopen the facility. As part of this investigative work, a historical review and architectural evalu evaluation of the facilities were completed. The report determined that the building was eligible for listing in the California Register of Historic Resources. The State Historic Preservation Office has since concurred with the findings that the Cayucas Vets Hall has historic significance at the local, state, and federal level. In her letter of concurrence, the preservation officer wrote that the Cass Warehouse is a rare example of its type and that, quote, it may be possible to demonstrate that the Cass Warehouse is the only surviving mid-late 19th century maritime warehouse still associated with its wharf in the state of California, unquote. In 2017, the county contracted with SDG Architects to develop the design for the rehabilitation. The project has received a categorical exemption under CEQA by following the State Secretary of the Interior Standards for the Rehabilitation of Historic Properties. Since 2017, staff has been working with design and engineering consultants, environmental staff, the Coastal Commission, and state parks to finalize the design documents. All required approvals have been received and the building permit was issued by the State Fire Marshal in December of 2020. The completed project will raise the building's foundation two and a half feet above its current level to protect it against sea level rise, secure the structural integrity of the building, and restore its historic fabric. It will provide ADA compliant connections to the facility, the beach, and the pier, and most importantly, restore this important cultural and economic resource to the community and the region. The county has provided roughly $500,000 in funding to bring this project to its current bid ready stage. To complete the project, we estimate roughly 4.7 million will be needed for hard construction costs, including general conditions, the contractor overhead and profit, construction contingencies, and an allowance for inflation until construction begins. An additional 680,000 is estimated for construction face off costs, which includes staff time for project management, design consultant fees, construction management, testing and inspection, and contingencies. The result in is a, in a total estimated cost of $5.4 million to complete construction of the project. As you know, the project received a grant award of over $1.9 million from the California Natural Resources Agency through their Community Cultural and Natural Resources Prop 68 grant program, which your board accepted on September 1st of 2020. This was a highly competitive grant program and the Vets Hall Rehabilitation Project was only one of 19 projects statewide from over 240 applicants to be awarded funding from this grant program. When the 1.9 million grant award is accounted for, the remaining estimated funding required to complete the project is roughly $3.5 million, which is the amount of the internal loan 
request before you today. However, there are at least three additional grant applications currently in process. The staff for one of the grant applications, the State Coastal Conservancy is recommending a $300,000 grant be awarded to the project at their upcoming December meeting. And it should be noted that the Conservancy has approved every staff recommended grant to our county in the last 20 years. Additionally, a grant application through the locally operated state parks grant program is currently under review. And another application will be submitted to the state parks, rural recreation and tourism grant program in early January. If the project is success successful with any of these grants, the need for debt financing in the future to pay back the internal loan will be reduced. I'd like to now hand it off the presentation to Jim Hamilton where he will explain the financing plan for the project. Thank you, Rob. Morning, board. Um, Jim Hamilton here, County Auditor, Controller, Treasurer, Tax Collector. We thought we'd take a moment to include a slide just to speak to the financing element of this project, which technically is the action that you're taking today. And by approving an internal loan, this would then allow release of bids and award of a construction contract. So it's, it's really approving the project is what's happening today. So what we've proposed in this financing proposal went through the Debt Advisory Committee. Um, is an approach that's been used in, with a couple other projects recently um, when a project needs some bridge funding. In other words, the project needs funds in place in order to award the contract, but there's a, a later um, a, a debt action that would ultimately fund the project. So we did this with uh, some CSA 10 water tanks um, awaiting USDA a, a, a loan, and also with the Oceano Drainage Project, which is also a private placement bond sale with USDA. So unique to this project, the timing happens to work out where there's a couple large facility projects in the works um, with private market, well actually public market bond sales that are expected to occur um, next summer. Um, this is a pretty small ticket project relative to what you can normally um, make economical with um, a public bond sale. But because we've got those other projects coming up, this project could be included in that bond sale and take advantage of our bond rating and um, get you know, favorable interest rates, more so than you could do with this project on its own. So the action today is to approve a loan from the Tax Reduction Reserve Fund, and that would be in place, as, as Rob said, for whatever balance is needed for the project. There may be other grants that come in um, that, that would reduce that amount that's ultimately borrowed towards the project, but this just gets full funding in place as of now to proceed with the project. Take any questions? Okay, any questions for Jim or Rob? Okay, Nick. So then, so then what happens after that, right? So, um, so if you approve the loan, then how does that get paid back? So Nick Frankel, Parks Director. Um, so the intent is to transfer the operation of this from the Real Property Services, which currently operates it with an agreement with the uh, uh, Lions Club, over to Parks, and then we would apply our cost recovery policy to set fees and work with the Lions Club on, um, on still maintaining those community uh, benefits that are there, those community activities, as well as uh, adjusting the fees to make enough money to recover the costs and repay the, the debt, as well as um, increase uh, enough funding to have a maintenance reserve and, and close any gaps in the future so that we can maintain it. Uh, additionally, the community is doing a fundraising effort and they have um, a few hundred thousand dollars in commitments already and that can be used to close any gaps. So in those first startup years, sometimes you're, you're not making the, the money that you will in, in the ongoing years. Um, so if there's a revenue shortfall, then that funding could be used to close that gap so it wouldn't put general fund at risk. Um, the Beach, we don't anticipate any reduction in demand for beachfront weddings. So I think that those are gonna continue. Uh, this facility is gonna be a much, much improved facility with views out into the ocean uh, from the hall, the, the adjoining deck. The way that it is being rehabilitated is to serve better as a, as a rental facility. So its income potential is quite large. Um, and, and the ability to um, repay the debt is, is very, very great. Um, and we've had an independent review from the auditor's office to make sure that, that our numbers look like they work. Our, and the rates that we would be charging are gonna be at or below market rates. And even at that level, 
um, it's easy to, to make these payments. Okay, next slide. So what happens if you don't approve it is, well, at some point we gotta do something because the building is closed, it's red tagged, it's falling apart, and at some point you're going, gonna have to do something with the building. Um, it's not gonna get any cheaper the longer we wait. So that's the urgency right now is to actually get it done now. We have a, a grant in hand. If we don't move now, then that grant is at jeopardy. Um, so now it's, it's definitely gonna cost more in the future unless we got grants in the future, which you don't know. Um, returning grants is never a good idea. We do constantly apply for grants. It undermines the credibility of your grant applications if you get awarded a grant and then you don't follow through on it and you return it. We like to make sure that we follow through on our commitments and this was a commitment we made. Um, we have a lot of staff time and a lot of effort already invested in this. The community's well invested in it and, and uh, we wanna make sure that we're continuing the economic benefit of this to the community. It results in TOT and a lot of people coming from the valley, a lot of people coming throughout California to come um, and experience Cayucas and this is a draw for a lot of the folks that are there. So if you do approve it, then, um, then we really do see that, that we can move forward immediately. The, the urgency here is the grant. So we have a grant at hand, has a timeline on it. We need some solid funding in place right now so that we can go out to bid and actually complete the project. Um, if we wait longer, then that time frame is gonna get very, very narrow and the ability to, to meet that grant timeline is gonna be very, very difficult. Uh, but like was stated before, we do have other grants that are outstanding. So if those come through, then this financing wouldn't even be necessary. The benefits to the community are beyond just restoring and rehabilitating the, the structure to, um, to what it was, but it's actually adding accessibility, adding additional public uses that are there, improving the recreation, and it fulfills our obligation uh, to keep this open to the public. So that's really what we're asking you to do. And the recommendation, we were asking that you actually approve the recommendation to do the budget adjustment for, from the tax reduction reserve. And I'm available for questions. Any questions for Nick? Okay, I'm gonna go out to public comment. I've got quite a few speaker slips. I'm gonna begin with Breck Smith, followed by Melissa Rury. Breck? Okay, come on down. And then Melissa, come on down too, and we'll have you at the other podium. You can take your mask off to speak too. If you want to take ah, it off. Bless you. <laughs> Good morning, still. Madam Chairman, honored supervisors, esteemed staff and all of my fellow citizens in Cayucas, you can wave your hand. Are you running for office or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just, I, just, I just love my people. I'm Breck Smith with the Cayucas Lions Club, and I'd like to take us back six to the year 6 BC. That's six years before COVID. At a time when the Cayucas Vets Hall was fully operational, providing joy and happiness to over 100,000 people a year. We hosted over 30 weddings, had family reunions, a batch of birthday parties, and lots of luncheons. We love our luncheons. The polar bear dip is always a chilly, chilly thing to attend, especially if you attend it, uh, enjoy it. And the Miracle Mile always ends up at the Vets Hall for breakfast. We have our breakfast burritos. And lions are out there doing their things and the staff's in there doing their things. And it's, it's really neat to watch. The Cancer Support Group of Templeton holds a special day for families and kids every year. And a support facility in Fresno calls me every year and says, can, they, can we bring our kids over again this year? And I say, yes. I will arrange for the beach wheelchairs so we can get the kids to and from the, the, the vets hall down to the water and back. And they all have a wonderful time and it's such a neat thing to see the kids 
uh, being helped into the water or wiggle their toes in the sand. It's a lifetime memory for them. And it's wonderful to have accessible restrooms, which we, use, which we used at the hall. The Cayuga Seniors Club has a monthly uh, luncheon with nearby assisted living facilities bringing people in. Oop, gotta move. And uh, again, restrooms are, are essential to them. The Cayucas Art Association met on Tuesdays, had a watercolor class in this part of the hall. We had the, the coastal, the scenic coast uh, carvers guild in the other end of the hall making wood chips, and it was fun. So there are many ways to expand the usability of the facility for, for, new, for new things and new programs. With the list I've given you and a brand new hall, the possibilities are endless. There are millions and millions of memories to be made. And I'm ready to get back to work. So. You've heard it said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I submit, nothing ventured, poof, everything lost. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Melissa yes. Murray, followed by Laura Coleman. Laura, come on down. Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa Curry. I'm here today to uh, represent the Visitor Alliance of Cayucas. Um, we are the Cayucas Local Fund Advisory Board of the Slow County Unincorporated Tourism Business Improvement District. We have um, worked with uh, the county and the District 2 Supervisor Bruce Gibson in the past um, on numerous projects, with the most recent being the installation of the whale tail bench and the rebuilding of the First Street Public Beach Access. Um, as you are aware, the community serving venue, the historic Cayucas Veterans Hall, has been closed since 2016. The closure of our only event venue in Cayucas has been a devastating loss for the community as well as our um, visitors. Our board implores you, please move forward with the restoration of the Cayucas Vets Hall and allow this venue to once again provide a home to our community organizations meetings, weddings, memorial services, community meals, in concerts and events as it has historically for nearly 80 years. Should your board consider moving forward with the restoration funding, we are committed to contributing additional funding to assist with creating a vibrant and economically viable historical venue at the Cayucas Vets Hall. The restoration of this venue has the potential to be the brightest and most sought after venue on the Central Coast dedicated to serving the needs of visitors and our community alike. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura Coleman, followed by Greg Bencourt. I'm sorry, Lila. Good morning, supervisors, staff, and audience. My name is Lila Coleman. I've been a grateful Cayucas community member for the last 40 years, both as a resident raising a family and as a business owner of the Shoreline Inn. I'm also on the board for the Slow County Unincorporated Business Improvement District. I'm here today to encourage you to support the proposed funding plan for the Cayucas Vets Hall. The building of Cayucas Pier six years ago was vital to Cayucas, as what would the town be without it? However, the nerve center of Cayucas is a Vets Hall, which, as you know, is located at the foot of the pier. Community and business activity was already in swing in the 1800s when Cayucas became a trading port, which in turn helped build up the economic hub of the Central Coast. Steamer and butter days were gathering days that brought community together at the Vets Hall when the ships would come in. It was a time to take care of business and to socialize. These goals haven't changed much. During my time here, I participated in and attended events such as weddings, memorial services, parties, classes, scouting functions, graduations, festivals, community fundraisers, and heritage celebrations just to just to name a few. The hall has served community and service organization. It's been the place for town hall meetings. Although we've been able to get by without the vet, use of the vets hall, none of these fun functions have been able to operate at the same caliber as before. Without the vets hall, we lost the most vital venue in town, which in turn has cost us potential business. We lost groups such as the Woodcarvers Guild and the Mineral Gem and General sh Jewelry Shows, 
Look at the 4th of July alone. Where to play bingo, where to have the pancake breakfast, how to execute the barbecue, and a side note, where to blow up the balloons for those amazing balloon arches. The events that used to take place at the Vets Hall that I mentioned earlier brought visitors that needed lodging and dining. They look forward to shopping and taking advantage of services such as massages and beauty care. And when events brought first time Cayucas visitors, they were often mesmerized with our unique Americana beach town. And thanks to the Vets Hall and the spirit of Cayucas, they were hooked and looked forward to coming back, which of course meant future business for merchants. A classic example of the need of the Vets Hall is the Cayucas Sea Glass Festival. Every business looked forward to the event. Lodging sold out, restaurants were full, and shops had recorded and had record-breaking days. The History Museum was open, and the Cayucas Land Conservancy led hikes. Community and visitors came together. Currently, there is no future date set for the next festival due to the lack of a venue. Cayucas is one of the few co communities that doesn't have an adequate hall to host meetings, gatherings, and events. We're blessed that the Vets Hall has brought people together for over 150 years. That's what it's about, and we need to get back, get it back. Let's get it built and get on with Cayucas life, one of enhancing and bonding the community. Thank you. Thank you, Greg Bettencourt, followed by Brendan Fritchie. Madam Chair, Board, Greg Bettencourt. I'm the um, Chair of the uh, Restore Cayucas Vets Hall Committee. Um, the goal of our committee, the mission of our committee is to do everything we can to um, get the hall restored for all, the, for all the reasons that you've heard already. Um, our goal, our specific goal is to raise at least $500,000 to help that happen. Um, basically, we want to convince you that this is a, a wise and risk-free physical decision on your part. Um, you've, you've seen how many people there are in the audience supporting this, uh, but for Cayucas folks, supporting means more than just showing up at a meeting. It also means putting money in the game. So um, early in September, when we learned that this process was beginning, uh, we formed a committee and we made an arrangement with the San Luis Obispo County Community Foundation, and um, they, we have we have created an account there where um, the foundation will serve as our, one, our 501c3 repository for funds raised by the committee. Uh, since that time in eight weeks, uh, my wife just told me that we have commitments for $340,000, okay? We've done, we've done that fundraising strictly through email. Uh, we haven't sent out any mailers, which we intend to do when uh, to residents and property owners. Uh, assuming that you vote to support the restoration. Um, that doesn't include $115,000 that Breck didn't mention that the Lions Club has already raised, nor does that $340,000 including uh, potential VAC money. Um, so we, we fully anticipate to participate in this project and make it as easy on taxpayers as we can make it. Uh, you should know and I think most of you do, um, but I'll remind you that uh, this, isn't a, this isn't a hollow pledge. Uh, when the pier was being restored, we, um, the community banded together and raised $950,000 to help support that project, and we still, uh, we put $600,000 of that money in an account at the community foundation, which, um, is dedicated to the inspection and maintenance of the pier, which county parks just ask for when they need it. Um, we expect to spend every penny of the money we raise, obviously a minimum of $340,000 and hopefully as much as $500,000 on, um, on the needs of the hall, which, um, which are unfunded by the three point five million dollar loan, uh, and that would include the estimated three hundred and forty two thousand dollars in potential shortfall. So we're we're all in here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Brendan Fritchie, followed by John Carcel. Thank you, supervisors. And uh, I'll, I'll be a little bit brief because I feel like everyone here has, has hit the, the main points. But just to summarize, uh, as a community, we rely on the county, as an unincorporated community, we rely on the county uh, just for things like this, where we are showing our support for, for the initiatives you've, you have in place to help our community. And as uh, Greg men mentioned, and as it relates to the peer, we have come together, we have put our skin in the game, and we, and we do intend to do so. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce. I've worked with the Rotary Club, the Lions, the Lionesses, and the VAC. We all work together closely, and we all come together as needed when, when we need to support projects and to demonstrate to, to the county and to the board that we stand in unison uh, for these types of things. So I hope you guys appreciate that the entire town is all in and that we, we intend to follow up not just on our pledges, but just with the continuation of improving the community and improving the area, if you're serving visitors and to bring community members together. Um, just a quick note, I think, I think the, uh, the presentation by Parks, uh, uh, State Parks and County Parks summed everything up where it's, it's kind of almost a no-brainer where the, the grant money is there. We, we don't want to lose it. You don't want to uh, impeach the process of getting future grants by, by returning grants. Uh, the the, the uh, collaboration of a small bond such as this with the larger bonds is, is a perfectly timed scenario to take advantage of that so that the costs are kept low. And the future community benefit as uh, compared against the, the loss of the of the asset for both the, the town, the county, and beachgoers and visitors throughout the state internationally would be it's such a drastic combination of what the, the benefits to be gained versus the, the, the painfulness of a, of a dilapidated and you know, building falling apart right on the beach would be kind of, would be kind of an eyesore and it would be kind of like a, it would stand against the county and against all those who participated that we couldn't get it done. So we're right on the precipice and it seems like the natural step is to move forward with a very well thought out, very financially responsible plan, and I hope you do uh, support and uh, pass this measure. Thank you very much. Thank you. John Carcel, followed by Darlene Keberlein. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. You can take your mask off if you want to speak. I look better with the mask on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> definitely. No You're question okay about with it. That? Uh, I, I realize this is my first public meeting since COVID, and I realize I've been watching and involved in too many Zoom meetings because every time someone spoke up there, I was waiting for the lights to come on to see who it was. It's very discerning. Uh, I'm John Carcel. I'm president of the Cayuca Citizens Advisory Council, and obviously, as a council, we are unanimously in favor of the staff's recommendation. I, I do want to thank the board, though, for all the support that you have given in this project over the years, and it's been a difficult one. Uh, coming up because of the regulations and all the difficulties with all the agencies involved. And it looks like we're getting to the home stretch here. So I really wanted to express my thanks to you for your involvement. I think you know how much the VETS building is to this community. It, it's more than most buildings are to any community. And your support in the past and I think in the present is really appreciated. So thank you very much. Okay. Darlene Gaberlein followed by Douglas Henry. Good afternoon or this morning, whatever it is, and excuse my nerves, but um, I think we all agree that the Vets Hall um, is needed by our community and those that come to visit. But to me, kind of the Vets Hall and the Lions Club kind of goes hand in hand. So what I want to uh, tell you folks about is the Lions Club and their care, their unique care about this building. Uh, it started um, when my husband got active about 30 years ago and Arlie Robinson was the building manager. And you would get a call from Arlie, which would be something like, is your honey bun home? And I'd think to myself, oh, something's wrong at the vet's hall. So I'd tell Kenneth, he'd get the phone, put the phone down, go to the workshop, get some tools and off he'd go. And this would go on at least once a week. I'm sorry I used your name. I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, uh, and it would be anything, even a, a doorstop wasn't working. And that may seem minor, but on election day, which the elections were always at the vet's hall, 
you got to keep that door open and just a door stop or something like, oh, someone unplugged the freezer and now all the peppermint stick ice cream is melted down all over the, the bacon that goes to the lion's beans. And so that has to be taken care of. Or the ice machine isn't working and there's water all over the floor and off he'd go. Uh, or the bar, we really need to do something about that bar because the drinks keep sliding off into the patrons, you know, so he and a woodwork, uh, another a genius woodworker went down and they built this bar for the vets all. That was all on them. Uh, uh, or, or Becky Rogers will come and she has a yearly uh, quilters retreat there, or did have. And she called and, and Arlie said she wants the tables raised up a few inches. And so Kenneth went down to tell Becky, you know, we, we can't do that. Uh, uh, I've been a quilter for 30 years. I never did get that one. But anyway, he would just take off and take care of these things. And the unique um, uh, relationship these men have with that building, it's to me, I was thinking it's kind of like having a pet and you know uh, when you have a pet, you're going to have to take it to the vet and buy a license and get uh, shots. And it's probably going to wet on your new carpet and chew a, a leg on a chair. But you have to take care of it, and you're going to take care of it. And then this morning, I was thinking about the, talk, the pet thing. And then the, the vet calls and says, I'm going to put your pet down. And uh, if you want to come and get the leash and the collar and the bed you brought with the, to the, to the uh, veterinary hospital, you, you better get there because we're going to close at five. And it kind of was that way to, to see all of a sudden these men, and they all had jobs, not just my husband. I've got to have you wrap it up. Am I done? Yeah, we, <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> I, I anyway, hate to they end all, on that note with oh. you because it's sad. But Well, I was yeah. a guide at the castle. I had to learn to yell, I guess. But anyway, they all had their jobs. And to think about all of a sudden you've cared for this building and uh, you're told it's, it's, it's over. It's, it's condemned. Uh, it was quite a, quite a shock. Uh, and... Uh, but to have the funds taken away from this group who has taken so much care and taken care with this money, and all they do is make money and give it away. Okay. He might go down and help the lady lioness who can't work that stove Thank on you. their pancake Thank breakfast Thank you, at the 4th of July. I but can tell you're very passionate about this, so thank you very much. Time's up? Time's more than up. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Douglas Hendry, followed by Maggie Guy. Uh, How are you going to beat that? <laughs> um, thank you for being here today and, and considering uh, uh, funding this uh, facility. Um, and it's just not a, a Cayucas community facility. It is a, a county facility. It's a facility really of the state. Um, and so I, I appreciate the, uh, the presentation by Rob and Nick. They pretty much uh, stole all my thunder, but they did a much better job than I will. I'm a member of the uh, Restoration Committee. I was also a member of the Care Committee. Um, I'm the remaining intermediary between uh, the Community Foundation and Parks and Rec uh, with the endowment money that we have. We're looking forward to spending that at some point here uh, to maintain the pier. And I just want to emphasize that uh, we are all in in terms of <coughs> raising uh, enough money uh, that would allow you to feel comfortable and adding this bond amount. Um, and that's really what I have to say today. So I encourage you to vote uh, to fund what we need to get done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maggie Guy and followed by my last speaker slip, which is Taylor Brindley. Um, hi, my name is Maggie and I'm speaking on behalf of Tony LeGraw because she could not be here today. Um, dear Supervisors, as a member of the Restoration Committee in the community, please give your approval and support for the restoration of our historical Veterans Hall. Cayucas Veterans Hall is a historically significant building that has served our community and our visitors for over 80 years. It proves a home for meetings, weddings, memorial services, community meals, concerts, and events. 
The Vets Hall has been closed for nearly six years. This was the only event venue in Cayucas and has been a devastating loss for our community members, local small businesses, and our visitors. Tourism is the main economic force in our small community as well as in San Luis Obispo County. Restoration of this venue will create an improved re revenue stream in the form of TOT and sales tax generated from the several small business, small local businesses. This benefits the entire county with the financial contributions to the general fund. Of note, the Cayucas lodging industry contributes approximately 14%, over $800,000 of the total TOT proceeds, even though we only make up about 1% of the population. I implore you to move forward with the restoration of the Cayucas Vets Hall and allow this venue to once again provide a home for our community organizations and our visitors. The community has already stepped forward with significant financial pledges to help ensure the project will not be a financial burden to the county. Restoration of this venue will create vibrant, economically viable historical treasure for generations to come and will be one of the most sought after venues on the Central Coast, dedicated to serving the needs of our visitors and our community alike. Thank you, Tony LeGras, CEO of Beachside Rentals and board member of Visitor Alliance of Cayucas, Visit Slow, and Central Coast Management Association. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the last speaker is Taylor Brindley. Hello, I'm Taylor Brindley. New for me because I just got married. <laughs> um, and I'm part of the community. I'm also a small business owner in Cayucas, and I feel that this is really important to our small town. Um, I didn't get a place to have my baby shower because it, we don't have anything in our town for, for something like that. And um, I just really think that everybody would win from restoring this hall, uh, the Vets Hall. And it's been a historical place for everybody, for my grandparents who have been there um, my their 55 years. And it's something that I hope generations down can enjoy, a space to come together, family, friends, visitors. Um, they're going to be paying tax dollars for food at our restaurants, um, souvenirs, and they're going to be lodging in, the, in our places to stay. So I just think it's really, really important that we get this going, and um, I think now is the time that it's precedent that we get it going. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close public comment. That was the last speaker slip. I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, or, and or a motion. Supervisor Gibson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd certainly defer to any colleagues who might have questions. Um, but as you, I'm sure, won't be surprised, I'm going to come forward with a motion to support staff's recommendation on this. You know, this is a, this is a project you can support with your head and your heart. And you've heard the heart part uh, eloquently expressed by members of the Cayucas community. How much they care about this venue is really uh, extraordinary. And it, uh, <laughs> it makes me a little emotional to watch many of my friends uh, having done as much as they, as they have over the years. Uh, this community is indeed all in. Um, and it's, um, it proved its commitment to this. Um, this effort uh, with previous actions as well. Uh, the restoration of the pier and the nearly million dollars that was raised there. And, and the, the, the energy of this town is focused on this for a, a lot of reasons. Uh, partly because of its key role to the community, but also its key role to the economy. And I've talked to many of our small business owners over the six years that this hall has been closed and um, it is tough. And seeing this move forward now will make a big difference in a lot of ways in, in Cayucas, and it is a solid um, investment. Um, our staff put together a tremendous report that comes after hours of conversation about how this is going to work. The community stands ready to mitigate any risk uh, to this process, and in the end, this hall being rehabilitated is going to be an asset that uh, the county can be proud of. Not only can be proud of, but also an asset that's going to create revenue for our community parks system, which can benefit parks all over this, all, all over this county. So I'd like to thank the incredible team that has worked um, to get this where it is. Our staff from a variety of departments, um, 
public works, parks, the auditor controller, all have been uh, in, incredible. Uh, again, the community members, uh, the Coastal Commission has been incredibly supportive. The State Coastal Conservancy is going to, I'm sure, approve 300,000 more dollars to add to this, and that's gonna make this project even better. And so with that, Madam Chair, I would move staff's recommendation. Okay, do I, do you have comments, questions, or? I'll second, and I have a comment. Okay, go ahead. Um, first off, I wanna thank everybody for coming from Cayucas uh, today. I support this project like I supported the uh, community center in Simler a few years ago. I believe that these are vital parts of each community. I've used this many, many times. I have done the polar bear dip, and I, I would argue that probably more people, younger people should do it. Um, uh, it's coming up, it's a, it's a, great, it's a great thing. But I, I looked at this list that you gave, and there's a ton of things that I've actually been to uh, at the Cayucas Vet Center. I do know it's a community uh, jewel, and, and you treat it that way, just like you did the pier when the pier had to be shut down and you were able to raise the money for that. So I just wanna thank you all for coming today and, and the Lions Club for being very, very supportive. And um, we're looking forward to getting this going, and I know that Parks Department will do a good job and we'll be able to raise some revenue there for the community, uh, so thank you. Supervisor Arnold, yeah. your light is on. Sure, it is on. I just wanted to make comments. So I'm glad to see all of you here today and um, I know that um, I've supported this project for some time now, every ask that's come along. Uh, with, the, with the overall plan from the beginning for you all, it was to apply and with the help of county staff and wherever else to apply and receive grants and help restore your, um, your community's building. I, I want you to know that your scenario, the very same thing you're talking about is, is kind of playing out all over the county. Um, most of the community buildings in this county are, were built in the 40s and 50s and are having the same troubles um, th that you, you've experienced. For all of us, I think I want you to know that you're, um, the building is special to everyone in the county. I do want to say that. Um, I know that the community of Cayucas, obviously you're representing many of the folks that live there and the tourism industry is very supportive of this project. So I, I just have to share with you that um, I will continue to support this pro project. I will continue to support grant opportunities. I applaud you for what you're doing in the community to raise funds, but I don't, today I do not feel comfortable with the financing of this project in the way it's been proposed here. Um, the plan really uh, would, is, is to add a countywide taxpayer a debt service and then hope that it'll all work out, be finished and be able to um, pay back that debt over 30 years. I don't think that's the proper channel for, for this project. I think the proper channels for funding this might be uh, from the county, maybe public facility funds, uh, but to continue to uh, reach out to the state of California and the many pockets of money they have, especially in a year where they have record uh, revenues at the county. What you all are asking for today is taking three point three and a half million dollars out of the tax, out of our reserve funds, basically. In a year when we have staff forecasting a budget gap of two to eight million dollars and a lot of other needs, you saw us go through um, what our budget, the beginning of what our budget priorities um, are and what we're hoping we can uh, be able to pay for in this next um, coming year. So again, I, I support your project. I would support um, with letters and contacts and relationships, uh, getting money at, uh, through the grant process, but uh, I can in good conscience vote for what you're asking for today and the financing mechanism um, that, that you're asking for. So that's all I have to say. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. I uh, will ask Annette for a roll call vote, please. Supervisor Gibson? Yes. Supervisor Pashaw? Yes. Supervisor ortiz Lay. Yes. Supervisor Arnold? No. And Chairperson Compton? Yes. Okay, so item number 37, which is coming up next. No, we can't do that. We can't do that in here, sorry. Sorry to rain on the parade here. <laughs>